Greenville City Council approved the development of a multi-million dollar shopping center and apartment complex. Students are seeing a change to the ad drop system. And Pirate Football goes on the road to play Navy this weekend. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Tech TV. I'm Jessica Gribben. Pedestrians in Greenville will start receiving tickets for following crosswalk laws. No, these aren't fines, but instead are coupons for a free item from two local businesses. The Greenville Police Department will soon start this campaign to encourage pedestrians to follow crosswalk laws. These good tickets will be distributed to drivers or pedestrians at these crosswalks. The Scullery and Sup Dogs are supporting the campaign, as well as the campaign's goal to strengthen community relationships. This initiative will last for six months. Greenville will soon gain a new place to live and shop. The Greenville City Council has recently approved a $32 million shopping center and apartment complex development project at the corner of Dickinson Avenue and Reed Circle. Sidewalk Development, a real estate development company based out of Baltimore, will fund the construction of the new housing on Dickinson Avenue. The new development will have housing geared towards college students and young professionals. Though the plans have been approved, construction will not start right away. The City of Greenville and Sidewalk Development have not yet named the complex. Rules for adding and dropping classes are a little different for university students this year. Officials recently changed the rules to allow students to drop up to 16 credit hours total while at the university. This process is now referred to as a withdrawal rather than dropping. Officials hope this will help students graduate on time as well as retain enrollment. All students are eligible even if they have already used their four university drops. For more information on the withdrawal from classes, visit theeastcarolinian.com. Now on to sports. Let's start some sports off with ECU baseball. Frankie Everett has been named the Skippers Dugout Division I Volunteer Coach of the Year. Everett is in his second year with the Pirates. The award was announced last Friday. Cross Country's only home meet is going to be scheduled for this Friday at 5.30 p.m. The Pirates start off their season at home this Saturday with their purple and gold meet at 10 a.m. That will be the Pirates' swim team. Men's golf teed off last weekend at the Rod Myers Intercollegiate Tournament. The team finished fourth out of 14 teams. The team will be at VCU this Monday and Tuesday for the VCU shootout. Women's golf has also been busy as they kicked their season off last Monday and Tuesday with the second place finish out of 12 teams. Women's golf will not be back on this course till the 28th of this month. Soccer had a successful weekend as they picked up two wins against Western Carolina and Charlotte. They will play tomorrow night at home versus UNC Wilmington before welcoming in Old Dominion this Sunday. Also, freshman Courtney Cash has earned American Conference Rookie of the Week nod. The freshman scored her first goal last Friday against Western Carolina. Volleyball continues its season by picking up two home wins and their home kickoff this weekend. The Pirates are now 6-2 with the three games they have coming up this week. The team will travel to South Carolina this Friday to face the South Carolina Gamecocks at 7 p.m. The team's weekend will end with two games on Saturday against Wolford and Charleston Southern. That's all for me. Our correspondent Adam Decker will finish off sports with the main event, Pirate Football. Adam, tell us about the battle in the swamp. Hi, Madison. And a battle it was as the East Carolina football team suffered a heartbreaking loss after a poorly timed turnover by quarterback Blake Kemp Saturday, losing to the Florida Gators 31-24. Kemp threw for 73 yards and completed all five of his passes, including a 31-yard touchdown pass to outside receiver Davon Grayson on the game's opening drive. After kicking a field goal, Florida took the 10-7 lead when quarterback Will Greer connected with tight end DeAndre Goolsby on a 32-yard play-action bootleg touchdown pass. Neither team scored in the second quarter as the Gators missed two field goals, making their halftime lead 10-7. After an interception by Pirate safety Bobby Falp, Kemp connected with Isaiah Jones on a 27-yard touchdown pass, giving the Pirates a 14-10 lead. Florida then answered back on the next drive, with Greer finding wide receiver Demarcus Robinson for the six-yard score. Two possessions later, Kemp threw a pick six to Florida's Jalen Tabor, allowing Florida to take the 24-14 lead and all the game's momentum. After an ECU field goal, Florida took its biggest lead of the game on a long five-and-a-half-minute drive, capped off by a seven-yard touchdown run by Kelvin Taylor, making the score 31 to 17. With their winning chances diminishing, the Pirates then marched down the field and made it a one possession game after Kemp connected with tight end Bryce Williams over the middle for a seven yard touchdown. ECU's defense forced a quick three and out, allowing the Pirates to march 57 yards and threaten 
at the Florida 13-yard line with less than a minute left, down one touchdown. It was then that Kemp dropped back to pass with the game on the line and fumbled the ball as he tried to throw a pass towards the end zone. ECU dropped to 1-1 one and, one and will play the Naval Academy at 3.30 on Saturday in Annapolis, Maryland. The Texperts and I will preview the matchup for you this Friday. This has been Adam Decker with your weekly football report. We want to thank you for checking out today's show. Our shows will be posted every Thursday at theeastcarolinian.com. For all updates between shows, visit theeastcarolinian.com and follow the East Carolinian on Twitter and Facebook. We'll see you next week.